Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Becca and today we are going to go around my plant room and just like maybe some other parts of my house too and do an update on my collection and some things that I've shown in some past plant tour videos and update you on how they're doing now as we prepare for winter to set in. So let's get started. Okay, we are starting off strong with my Anthurium baluanum and it has this new leaf, which you can see is a nice light green color. It did get a bit crunched in the process of releasing, and I think it is just because the room is pretty dry. Half of it looks really nice, <laughs> with the other half not so much. But this is what the leaves look like when they are nearly perfect. So they are very, very beautiful. Um, but yes, we did have some complications, and Ethereum will do this. And I just didn't get around to misting it as the leaf was coming out. So something to keep in mind if you have anthurium and you don't have like the highest humidity, definitely look into spritzing the leaves as they're coming out because that will help prevent this madness. But in any case, it is very beautiful and most of the leaves have not done that in the past. So hopefully it'll be putting out another one relatively soon and look how tall it's getting. It's getting really tall. Like I almost feel like I should propagate it <laughs> and like, I don't know, chop this. I don't know how Anthurium do with that. Like if I was to like chop this top off, if another plant would like shoot up, I don't really know how it would work. I've never seen someone do that with Anthurium, but I've seen it done with lots of other plants. So I'm sure that it would, but I need to look into that a little bit more, but I am going to be repotting this before the season ends because that pot is very small. <laughs> for this plant and it needs something much bigger. So stay tuned for that. And this Philodendron 69686 put out this leaf a couple weeks ago. It's like completely hardened off. So not like super exciting cause it's not like this nice light green color, but we do have a new leaf on my El Choco Red. I would say that this leaf has turned out to be a pretty classic El Choco leaf. It has the really beautiful red underside and it is, deliciously velvety. It is just so beautiful. I'm really excited to see it continue to unfurl, but it's been unfurling for a couple days. So hopefully in another couple days, it will be completely finished. It's really exciting. And then in a Patreon plant tours video, I showed repotting this one and this one, and this is a philodendron. I'm going to put the name on the screen. I don't exactly remember, but it's really, really cool. Like I'm, I love like a lance shaped leaf and it has like these cool little ears. I just think that it's so awesome. Please ignore my nails. I'm like so distracted by <laughs> how, how bad they look. Um, and then this Hoya, oh, I thought that I kept the tag. I'll put the name on the screen of what this is, but it's one of those Hoya that has a really nice splashy design on it. I don't know if this would be a design or like a texture. It doesn't have like, it doesn't raise up on the leaves or anything. So I guess it would be a design, but it's on this U trellis and it is absolutely beautiful. I feel like I have a Hoya that I grew from a small plant and grew it up on this trellis, but I didn't. I just got it as this, you know, like it's like all the reward of growing Hoya for a long time and then just having it right away. It's really nice. <laughs> the Billy is putting out a new leaf, as you can see. It's in the process. It's doing the philodendron foot thing, but hopefully that leaf will be a pretty good size. I'm sure that it'll be at least this big, if not a little bit bigger. So I'm really excited. And I was actually surprised that it's doing this in pretty much winter time. But then again, it is the end of the growing season. So maybe they're gonna be putting out their last push of energy before they go to sleep. Because if you didn't know, a lot of my plants do actually go to sleep in the winter time. House plants don't always go dormant in the winter time, but these ones tend to like more than any other plants in my collection because it does get pretty cold in here. But I do have a heater that I will show you and that helps. Okay, I showed in gosh, my, I think my Q&A video, this plant, but just in case you missed it, this plant is finally putting out a new leaf and it hasn't done anything in a couple weeks, but I did notice this starting. So normally it just hangs out inside of this little sheath, like nothing will come out beyond this. And then now we have something here. And that's the first time this plant has ever done that for me. So I'm excited to see if in a couple weeks we might have another Anthurium regale leaf. We will have to see. I'm really excited. I hope that that's the case. 
Okay, my Thai constellation does look like it wants to put out another leaf before the end of the season. And you can tell that based on looking at the most recent leaf that's come out and sort of feeling along the stem, it'll have a little bump. So I can feel something and I can see something in there. You can see there's like extra variegation right here in this like lumpy part and that is another leaf. So hopefully that will emerge relatively soon. I think I'm going to fertilize all of these one more time in the next time that I water and then kind of see where things go from there. Typically don't fertilize through the winter in here unless I'm noticing that the plant is continuing to put out growth. In that case I will, but usually I stop mostly just because I forget. It's not really that I'm intentionally not doing it. I just forget and I remember more so when the leaves are putting out lots of new growth in the summertime. So if they're all putting out lots of new growth, I'll definitely continue to fertilize. But in the realm of new growth, my elbow just put out this leaf and it still has its like light green color. Um, I think it put this out like a week or two ago. So we've got this really cute set of leaves. I noticed that this thing really operates in like two sets of leaves. So we've got the, this set right here, <laughs> and then you go up a little bit and you got this set here. So I'm interested to see if it'll do it again because that's kind of what it's done since I had it. Although we do have a longer, longer spaces between the nodes more recently. And I think that's just the plant is stretching for light. And I don't really know what I can do to help it in that regard because it is already very close to a south window. This is a south window if you didn't know. So the sun is going to be lower in the sky, like maybe like about right here through the winter and it gets more direct light in here. So I think that'll be good for these, but really only time will tell. And this new leaf, though it is kind of small, it is very cute. I am actually very fearful that my linearis is not doing so well. We are getting some browning at the bottom of some of the pieces, as you can see here, that is like a new stem that was going to come out and then it died. So it's just all brown. And then the top is getting woody, as you can see here. That is usually not a good sign. Although I did talk to my friends about it and they said that that's not necessarily a death sentence, but I feel like that's not a good sign and I'm fearful that I'm going to have to replace this plant. I mean, it is still like doing just fine, as you can see, like, it's fine, but it didn't really put out any new growth this season. So I'm a little nervous about how happy she is. And I did have it over on that side of the plant room most of the year, but well, most of the growing season, let's say. And I think that it wasn't enough light for it. And so it sort of suffered. And so I brought it back over here to hopefully get that going again. And I actually cut some pieces off to propagate just in case. And also I wanted to try to learn how to propagate this plant because I've never done it before successfully. So I wanted to give it a try and I'm gonna show you what that looks like right now. Well, first of all, in the cabinet, I decided I wanted to root some um, linearis in here with water. And it does actually look like I've rooted some of it. One of the pieces looks like it rooted, but these other two do not look like they rooted. So this one has been saved. Oh look, and it's even putting off like a little offshoot. So that's exciting. I'm gonna put that back in there for now. But these other two pieces I think weren't very healthy to begin with. So I might try to do the butterfly method to propagate these like I did with the other thing I'm going to show you. So I propagated this one using the butterfly method and basically that means that you're just cutting between every single set of leaves and then you take those sets of leaves and you just stick them into a substrate. So I actually just put them in De La Tanks and so far so good. Like there's definitely some that don't look amazing. Like they look a little wrinkly. Yeah, like those ones we can pull out, but there's so many pieces in here that hopefully some of them will take, like hopefully at least half of them. And then I can share them with friends or pop them back into the pot. We'll just have to see, but I am trying to make sure that this stays pretty moist. And then there's another Hoya that I tried to save. And that is my Hoya polyneura. And I have it in a net pot in soil. And most of this like substrate is now, because it's a net pot, a lot of the smaller things fell out. So this is basically just cocoa chips and pumice. And then I have like a little water reservoir at the bottom here so that it can stay moist. And it is definitely staying moist, which is good. But these leaves were very, very thin. And I was like pretty certain that the plant was dead, but they're all still very thin as you can see. It's like very wrinkly 
I don't know if this plant is going to make it. I think it might be dead already. I don't really know, but I figured it was worth trying to fix. So I have these in that little lighthouse. And so they're getting lots of light all day long. And hopefully between the keeping moist and having lots of light, they will end up rooting. Okay, so this elbow is kind of hidden back here. It's kind of tangled up. But as you can see, we've got a new leaf and it looks like, oh my gosh, it looks like there's a fin... Oh wait, no, that's not a fenestration. <laughs> I thought there was a fenestration, but there's not. But as you can see, it has some really nice variegation. It looks very marbly, like very similar to this one. It'll probably have more green than that one, but that's totally fine. I don't really... Oh wait, no. It does have a fenestration. Look at that. Can you see? That is a fenestration. Okay, I'm not going to mess with it. That's exciting because none of the leaves have come out with that yet. I think that this was the most recent leaf that it's put out. So that's really exciting. Yay. I'll keep you updated on this one, probably on Instagram as it develops. The first fenestrated leaf on a Monstera deliciosa is truly the most exciting leaf. Okay, we've got my Philodendron Glorious and I did upgrade its pole to be a little bit longer. It's not much longer. It really needs like one of these really tall ones. And I will do that eventually, but this will probably go out to the greenhouse because I just think it'll be happier out there. And I'm noticing my philodendron are putting out a lot of like nectar. This one and my splendid over there have been doing that, but it's almost like it stains the leaves. And I honestly thought for a while that it was pest related, but I diligently check this plant for pests and I haven't found anything but I don't know, I might still spray it just in case, but I know that um, philodendron do put this out, but for some reason it seems like it's like deteriorating the leaf. So if anybody knows like what's going on there, I would love your input. You can see there's like light brown dots and on the back, it's just, there's like deposits. And this is like liquid, it's like crystallized at this point. That's what it looks like when you pull it off. But it leaves behind mark and the leaves still seem healthy, like they're holding on just fine, but I don't know why it's doing that. Anyway, it is putting out a new leaf, which already seems to have this stuff on it. Or it might just be rubbing on this back, the back of this leaf and getting it on it. But anyway, new leaf, very exciting. It has some pretty nice aerial roots that I hope will attach the, I don't know, maybe I don't want it to attach because I do need to move it onto a different type of wood post. And yeah, if you have any ideas about what these, what the spots are doing, like why that is happening, besides if it's like a normal thing, cause I know that philodendron do put out nectar or whatever, but I don't know why it's staining. Also exciting, this is my Splendid, I've showed it a few times at this point, but I propagated it finally. So it was all the way up to the top of the pole and most of the stem was bare like up to this point. So I cut it and I was doing, um, what is that type of propagation? I was doing the type of propagation where you just put like moss around the aerial roots. I f I'm forgetting what that's called. Um, I did that and I rooted it and now I have it in more moss down in that pot and I just keep the moss moist by having water in the bottom of that saucer. And it seems to be doing pretty good. Probably will be rooted enough to put in soil relatively soon. So I'll probably put that in a repotting video whenever I end up doing that, but I'm glad that I did it. And I think that I'm going to, oh, it's called air layering. <laughs> I think I'm going to air layer this plant as well because these gaps are so big. I don't know. I might just air layer it and then pot it back into the bottom of the pot because these leaves that are the original leaves are dying off. They're saying goodbye. They've put in a lot of work though. So they've lived long lives. I've had these leaves for years and years and years. I mean, this one, is pretty spent. This one is pretty spent. Um, but yeah, the plant really gets rid of the white parts when it needs energy, unfortunately. So thankfully everything has been much more balanced as of lately. This was the leaf that it put out right after I propagated it the first time. As you can see, it's like cut off right there because I propagated it and then it shot all of this up. This isn't as exciting, but I did just notice that this Ripsalis is, this mistletoe Ripsalis has some new growth. You can see this like lighter green color. I haven't seen this put out new growth at all since I've had it. It's really just like lost growth. So that's exciting. I think maybe we're having a turnaround. I don't know. I would love for this plant to like look good and be happy because <laughs> it's so cool and funky, but it really just has not enjoyed living here. So hopefully this is a sign that something 
is coming. Something good is coming. All of the ficus have adjusted really well to moving back inside. Of course, they haven't put out any new leaves. I don't really expect them to. Maybe it'll put out this leaf because that feels like it was charging that up before I moved it inside. But after this, I don't think it'll put out anything new. But I am happy to report that we haven't lost any leaves, especially through the repotting because I repotted this one and I repotted this one. And usually when you disturb a ficus, you're going to lose some leaves just naturally, like moving them inside from, from being outside or you move them to a different room. Typically, you can expect to lose some leaves, but I haven't lost any on all, all three of these. My fiddly fig is doing pretty good as well, and I can see a bunch of <laughs> like little faint spider webs. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a spider that lives in my greenhouse or sorry, not my greenhouse, in my plant room. And I think she really likes these ficus. There's another one like right here. I don't know if you can see that, probably not. It's just her web from like jumping from leaf to leaf. It's a little white jumping spider. She's really cute. But these leaves could probably go. I think this was a sunburn from last year. And I never really stress when my ficus gets a sunburn because it's gonna grow more leaves and it's going to adapt better. And this is really just from like, if I watered it and I left it out in the sun, like rather than being in the shade, because I do put these in the shade outside, but maybe I moved it and watered it and I didn't move it back yet. Like this, this was from this season, I know for sure. And I think this was from last season, but it happens and the new leaves will adapt and figure it out. Like these newest ones came out when it was basically in full sun and they don't have any sort of sunburn, so. Although it is kind of ugly, it's not the end of the world. But I do need to come in and dust because I can tell that this plant is dusty. Oh, we do actually have this leaf coming out, which I bet you was residual from outside. Yeah, I'm sure that that will unfurl and then we'll be done with new growth <laughs> after that from this little piece. As you can probably see, there's cactus just sort of tucked in everywhere. And so these have been moved to this spot and they're gonna be moving out to the greenhouse whenever that is finished, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. But yeah, I just sort of put them places where they're not gonna be completely in the way and then just hopeful that I can move them out pretty soon because this is very cluttered and I don't love that. <laughs> I've got some more cactus down here just kind of tucked away. These are the scary ones that really hurt when you get stuck by them. Like the saguaro, it'll like make your finger sore for a couple days. So I try to keep it tucked away, but this is my heater. Um, I brought it in. This is the Palma heater from Biogreen. And I said this so many times, but this was actually sent to me by a really lovely subscriber um, years ago at this point. And I bring it out every single year and it's amazing. I have it kind of pushed up against because I didn't want it to be in the way, but I just set the temperature on this little thing and then it monitors the temperature and it turns on when it needs it. And ever since I got new windows in this room, it really doesn't turn on that often in the winter, but it is a nice little heat boost to keep it about 65 degrees. This is what the current conditions of this room are, 60% humidity and 66 degrees. I feel like that is pretty classic of what this room is in the winter time. 60% humidity might be a little bit high for in here. I mean, typically it's like 40 or 50, unfortunately. So I'm pretty happy with that 60%. This right here is a fun plant and I really enjoyed having it in here. It's a Thematophyllum sprucianum and this new leaf situation came out when it was, I don't think that this has come out since I've had it. I think this was brand new when I bought it and we have something going on for when it is ready to put out its next leaf, but I just think it's so cool. This look is just awesome. I feel like it really reads jungle and like botanical garden vibes. I just think it's lovely. It's just really cool. This leaf is really big. And I love how waxy these leaves look, how shiny they are. I did clean the leaves with one part lemon juice and two parts water. Basically, I just got a cup of water and I squirted some lemon juice in it. it I don't even know if that was the correct ratios. It was pretty simple. Like I don't put in too much lemon juice. Just a little bit is enough to cut through the water spots because it had a bunch of water spots. Like this was a little bit of hard of a nook to get into, but you can see like right along here, it's really water spot stained. 
So as long as you are able to put even a little bit of lemon juice in your water, I think you'll be able to get a lot of it off. And with this, I could have just gone in with like a Q-tip to get that little bit, but I wanted to do it pretty quickly. And as you can see, the plant looks really beautiful for it. Okay, so you know that I got the Florida Beauty. Look at the beautiful original mother leaf. Okay, so we had a new leaf come out and I think that it might have broken during transit, but the stem has still somehow <laughs> sticking through. So I might actually just get like a toothpick and kind of make it so that it stands up. It's just sort of bending and I don't know how that's still alive. So I might actually end up losing this leaf, but there is another leaf that is actually going to be coming out pretty soon. This little leaf spike is getting pretty thick. So I'm hoping that something will come out of there. This leaf or this plant that I moved to pawn has no updates since I last showed you. So we'll move on to my variegated heart leaf. It is looking like it's gonna put out a new leaf and I need to get it on something to climb. I think it'll be a lot happier with something to climb. I think it'll grow a lot faster and look more impressive. So there's that. Um, my Clara Nervium just put out this leaf. Can I even show you? Let's see. Everybody's in the way. This leaf right here, it's pretty big. I don't know if it's as big as these ones, but it does still have time to harden off a little bit, but it's nice and flat, which is nice, but it's not fully hardened. So I think it has a little bit more time. And then this one is the um, flower that I pollinated. And so you can see that the berries are getting more swollen. So hopefully, maybe in a couple months, we will have something to show for, but it looks like only the ones towards the top of the flower were pollinated. The ones at the bottom don't really look like anything happened. Now the other Burley Marks fantasy that I was propagating from wet sticks are these pieces and they seem to be doing pretty well. This one's putting out a new, oh wait, no, this is not a new leaf, that's an old leaf. Um, okay, no new leaves yet, <laughs> but they do look really cute and hopefully they're okay. I'm dr I am trying to keep them pretty moist, but I don't know how well they're gonna transition out of that super humid environment. No change since I potted them up, but I think that's a good thing. I don't think that I necessarily need to see a change. I kind of just like like seeing them stable. I did spray my Hoya with the sulfur spray. And since I did that, I have a bunch of new growth points coming out. So just wanna update you on, on that. I am going to be wiping this down pretty soon to remove the sulfur as is and then respray it. So we've got a new leaf happening here, up there. This looks like a promising growth point. This tip right here looks like it's gonna do something. And I think there's probably something down in there. So I showed that in my last video. So hopefully um, they look a little bit bigger since the last time you saw them, but I don't know if it'll be much different. And then this one I also sprayed. And this plant luckily gets light from underneath this grow light too. So it's getting a little bit of extra, but since I sprayed it, it is definitely putting out some new growth. So yeah, those are the collection updates up to this point. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some new leaves. I find that seeing new leaves as we enter winter is always a positive thing because I'm always sad that summer is leaving. And so seeing new leaves on my houseplants is a reminder that I kind of have an eternal summer in here if I kept the conditions correct. And you could too, depending on you know how your plants are set up in your home and what you do with them and what plants you grow and all of that. So definitely keep me updated about your plants too. Do you have any plants still putting out new growth? Just let me know what you're doing to prepare yourself for winter coming and yeah, just sort of what you're up to with your plants. I'm excited to hear about it. Okay, you guys, I will talk to you in the next one. Make sure that you're subscribed if you're not already. We're actually pretty close to 100,000. We hit 75,000 a couple weeks ago and I think that 100,000 is just around the corner. So would love for you to share my channel and subscribe if you're not already. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.